Have you ever been caught in a traffic jam and wished you had wings and could fly away from it all? Well, you're not the only one, but Moulton Taylor of Longview, Washington, did something about it. He designed and built the Aero Car. At San Francisco's International Airport, Taylor shows how quickly you can convert car into plane, change a 60 mile per hour traffic hampered buggy into a high flyer on the unlimited highways of the sky. The conversion takes but a few minutes. No more trouble than changing a tire and a lot more fun. Wings assembled, the pusher prop in the tail raring to go, likewise the pilot at the controls. So let's put traffic woes behind us and try that wild blue yonder. The aero car is at home on highways or skyways. Well, the Terrafuji's transition is a, what we call a rotable light sport aircraft. It's not designed to replace anybody's car, but rather if you're in, in the market for a light sport aircraft or an airplane, you might want to consider our vehicle because we provide a unique added capability to your aircraft. It uh, doesn't have a lot of the features that you may be used to in your car. So that's one way that we get a lot of weight out is we just don't include a lot of the things that you have in your normal car. But this will have a lot of familiar things to you as a pilot that are very similar to your airplane. It's built entirely of carbon fiber. We have aluminum hard points, part of the folding mechanisms, things like that. But primarily it's all carbon fiber construction and uh, that helps us keep the weight down to a minimum. Right now we're talking with the EPA about uh, whether they will consider this simply an airplane, in which case uh, you don't need any sort of uh, catalytic converter or anything like that on it, or if this will be sort of a special case scenario. And We're actually advocating that it be somewhat of a special case because we are hopeful that this will expand over time and this will become a more prevalent vehicle uh, in the marketplace and we'd like to lay the groundwork for something that's appropriate to this type of uh, platform. A lot of our customers are sort of the baby boomer generation pilots, the couple that's just retired or nearing retirement, and they want a recreational vehicle that they can fly around the country and have the freedom and flexibility of knowing that they'll be able to get wherever they want to go and not have to count on renting a car. Basically, it's just for them, this reduces the amount of hassle that they have to go through to fly. But a bigger possibility that we see is that uh, down the road, uh, and some of the people who have put deposits down on this vehicle intend to use this for their business. They intend to use this because they can count on being able to go somewhere. If a front comes through or something like that, you've got a salesman who visits a, a number of customers around a, a particular region. Um, they can visit more customers in a day. And at the end of the day, if a weather front is coming through, they can drive back to their home base and not have to worry about going back and picking up the airplane or something like that. Most people don't think about a light sport aircraft in that way because they're light sport and they're very sensitive to weather and all that sort of thing. And this is sensitive to weather, but it gives you that added freedom of folding up your wings and driving when the weather gets marginal. Right now, uh, we are targeting a 1,320 pound gross and a 450 pound useful load. That's our target right now. So, you know, people, bags, gas, 450 pounds. It's tight, we know. Um, but this is also, for a number of our customers, the ideal weekend getaway vehicle. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. The transition uses the Rotax 912S uh, 100 horsepower engine. It's in use in about 70% of the light sport aircraft fleet that's out there, so it's been around for a while. It's got a really good reputation, and if you're bringing a new platform to market, it's best to stay with a tried and true engine. So we're going with that engine. It also is approved to run on premium unleaded automotive gasoline, which is an important thing uh, for our vehicle because, as you know, it, we can just drive the vehicle into a gas station and fill it up. So that's a nice usability, a nice convenience aspect.
there are compromises, most certainly, is what are those compromises? How do you choose those compromises so that those are the ones that are the most appealing to the customer, that are going to have the least impact on their usage? This vehicle, because it's designed to operate safely on the road, we have a long wheelbase and a wide track and four wheels on the vehicle, and our center of gravity is far away from those wheels. So this gives you a very smooth, stable ride on the road, but it means that you have to get up to a higher speed before you have the aerodynamic pitch authority to rotate for takeoff. That was a compromise because we take up more ground roll. We have a longer ground roll than other light sport aircraft. Our ground roll is maybe 1,500 feet, something like that. But once we have the aerodynamic authority to rotate for takeoff, uh, we can actually go into a very aggressive climb because we have quite a bit of stall margin. We still stall down at 45 knots, rotate at 70. So we can go very aggressive into a climb, get a lot of altitude very quickly, and so we therefore expect about 1,700, 1,750 feet over a 50-foot obstacle. So we just hop right off the ground. That gives you a longer uh, time, a better abort option, because you can abort at any time up to that 70 knot rotation speed. Um, and the brakes are very effective. Four wheel disc brakes that are designed, and we actually have already done some braking testing in this vehicle, and we've brought it from 50 miles an hour down to zero in, on the order of 150 feet. So they're very effective brakes uh, when you have a vehicle that's designed to operate on the road. The prop is disengaged when you're on the ground, so it's locked in place there. And uh, the engine drives the front wheels through a belt drive, drives a continuously variable transmission, which is sort of like you would find in a snowmobile. And that drives a belt which drives the front wheels through a gearbox, which lets you select forward, neutral, reverse. So you can back this vehicle up and move it forward and do all the things that you can do in your normal car. We have a steering wheel that's always connected to the front wheels. We have a completely separate stick that telescopes up into position uh, under the steering wheel and uh, that is always connected to the elevator in the back and the ailerons on the side. The throttle when you're flying is on the center console. On the floor you have four pedals, the rudder pedals are on the outside, and the gas and the brake are in the center. So when you're flying it will fly just like a normal airplane. Stick, throttle, in your hands, rudder pedals on the floor. When you're driving it drives like a nor normal automatic transmission car. A steering wheel, gas and brake. And then when you convert between the two modes, you telescope that stick down and fold it down flat onto the floor of the vehicle. When you fold it down flat, that pulls the elevator up beyond its normal travel range to display the tail lights and the license plate on the bottom side of the elevator. So we get kind of all that functionality sort of built into a simple system. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. You're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navigates. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. To get involved in a, in a project like this, uh, you have to have a lot of personal motivation. and. Um, you know, I was one of those kids that from the age of eight I started saving up for my pilot's license and got it as soon as I could in high school and it was just always a lifelong passion and then when the light sport rule came along in 2004, I, it really opened up such a huge window of opportunity to do something entrepreneurial and uh, at the time I was finishing up my PhD at MIT and I knew a bunch of other folks like myself who sort of had an entrepreneurial bent to them and might be interested in doing something like this so we put together a business plan and it turned out that that got a lot of favorable reviews and it looked like it might actually work uh, from a business perspective, from an investment perspective, all that sort of thing. It just sort of gelled. And uh, when that happened, we got very excited. We got very excited because it, it's been a dream that's been around for such a long time. But to actually have the opportunity, because of light sport, to bring this to market and uh, to do it in a way that you could conceivably provide a return on investment for an investor. It just, all the pieces kind of fell into place. And uh, it's been, you know, things have been taken off since then. So we'll have to build a production prototype, a second vehicle after this proof of concept vehicle, and put that vehicle through ASTM testing for, uh, for light sport compliance. And uh, we expect the, the price to be uh, just under 200,000. 194,000 is what we're expecting our target price to be. We hope to have it out there starting in 2010. You'll probably see it at uh, Sun and Fun, Oshkosh, AOPA Expo, all the shows. So, well, Fantastic. Well, Carl, it will be a marvelous thing for aviation. And I thank you very much for your time today, sir. Thank you. Thank you.